Okay, we're back at the, uh, towards the end of the day here in San Francisco live for the HBase conference, the first inaugural conference for HBase. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, it's exclusive coverage of the Hadoop ecosystem and we're proud to be here. John, Shay, is that right? Yep, John Shay. Shay, <laughs> I've butchered it a few times. Uh, welcome uh, back. So uh, you work for Cloudera, I know that because uh, we work together, although I didn't work for Cloudera, I'm in the same office. Um, what employee number were you? I'm uh, number 15. Yeah, you're close. Okay, so you're in under 20 in the early employees? Yeah, definitely. Todd didn't know whether he was a 10 or 11 or 12. I guess, He's you know. He's like a 10, I think. He's like 10? Yeah. yeah. So you've been there for a while. So uh, tell me, what do you think of what's going on right now? Just on a personal level, uh, the, the ecosystem. You're heavily involved in the community. Um, you oversee a lot of the development early on, and now you guys have hundreds and hundreds of employees. How do you, what, what, what's going I, on? I think like, you know, we're here here at, uh, at HBaseCon, which is kind of like, um, HBaseCon is, kind of, HBase is kind of like the next system that's built on top of Hadoop. Like we started off with Hadoop, focused on the, the core storage and uh, processing platform. And now we're, we're focused here today on, on HBase, which is kind of like this um, system that gives you this real time um, reading and writing and random reading and writing, which basically is going to open up a whole new set of applications that you can deal with. Um, at this big data level, you know, so, um, and, uh, you know, I think that um, one thing that we're seeing a lot of Cloudera is, you know, all, all the Cloudera customers are using HDFS and, and, and MapReduce, but I would say a very large percentage of our customers are looking to HBase to solve that next set of problems. Now that we can store all the data, now that we can process all of it, um, you know, some of these jobs will take hours or 15 minutes or a large amount of time before you get an answer. And the next kind of level is like, how do we get answers in so milliseconds? So someone asked me, you know, this coming back to my Catholic roots, but they asked me, John, what's the holy trinity of, of, of big data relative to the ecosystem? Is it HTFS, MapReduce, and HBase now? Um, what I, it, or I, is there other elements? There seem to be, those seem to be the core coming together. Is, that, is it four, is it three? I mean, I, I think most people who are uh, users of the ecosystem are probably definitely using HDFS, uh, definitely using MapReduce. Um, I think more people will probably come into a hive or a pig, necessarily, before they come to an HBase. Um, but, uh, you know. HBase is scalable. HBase is scalable. So HBase is scalable. I mean, it's there's, turning certain, out. there's certain things that you're going to want to uh, bang against uh, just MapReduce directly against HDFS. But uh, if you're thinking about you know, serving real live traffic, um, you know, HBase is potentially an option for doing that, whereas you would never consider using HDFS for that, yeah. right? And uh, if you want to get, uh, potentially get like up to the second counters and statistics, um, you know, people like Facebook and people like OpenTSBB um, uh, use HBase so that they can get up to the second or Talk up about to the... What's open, uh, T um. open TSDB is an open time series database. And it's a project um, by one of the guys at Stumble, Benoit. Um, he goes by the nickname Suna, T-S-U-A-N-A. -A. Um, and they basically use it to um, run all their metrics, application level metrics. Um, That's an open source project. It's an open source project. It is, uh, I believe it's GPL licensed, but uh, it runs on top of HBase. So um, it's built to take advantage of what HBase can do with uh, real time reads and writes and uh, um, efficiently stores metric information, um, be it host level or application level, um, and presents uh, visualizations so that you can actually kind of Low see Low latency going. or? Low something. latency, like, you know, you will see, um, you know, basically up to the hundreds of, or up to the hundreds or tens of milliseconds ago, um, as opposed to having to wait for like a hive job to come back after 15 minutes. So, I mean, that's definitely kind of a use case. Uh, the Facebook guys have talked about something very similar they use uh, they have their own internal version of, of a system similar for keeping track of internal uh, Facebook application metrics, um, and even their their health management for their internal their internal clusters. So, what are you working on right now these days? Because I know you had multiple roles and you're doing a lot of different stuff yeah. uh, project-wise within Cloudera. What's your core thing now that you're working on? So these days, I primarily focus on HBase, and um, you know, up until recently, I've been primarily focused on uh, kind of a combination of two things. Um, a lot of what has happened is because we have this large uptake of customers and users, um, you know, HBase is a little bit more immature than an HDFS or a MapReduce is. So there are, there are, there are problems that come up and uh, 
because this is a production system and because it has essentially these high availability requirements and, and low SLA requirements, uh, we need to be able to bring a system that goes down back up qu as quickly as we can. So I've been working on a lot of repair tools to make it so that the amount of downtime within HBase, not HTFS, within within, within HBase itself. Yes, got it. Like, uh, um, you know, we want to minimize the amount of downtime that's necessary due to, let's say, a bug or something funny happening in HBase. Um, they still happen rarely, but when they do happen, we want to be able to recover from them quickly. So that that's been a good chunk of my time. Um, another part of it is, you know going over these customer escalations, trying to find out like potentially what some of these problems are so that we can solve those things more quickly. Um, and then I guess the other major thing is, you know, Cloudera has been growing. It's been growing pretty quickly. Um, this year in particular. This year in particular. Throttle up, throttled up hard. Um, yeah, I mean, and what we've been really been able to do this year is like bring on a lot of new engineers, a lot of new support engineers, a lot of new, um, you know, people who are gaining expertise in the system. So actually a lot of my time is spent uh, helping these folks come up to speed mentoring. so they can do mentoring. And training, right, training, just ramp up. Um, making tools so that they don't have to be as expert as like uh, a committer on the particular project would be. Um, and that's, that's, it takes time, it takes effort, but it, it also makes it so that uh, you know, we can better serve uh, our growing number of customers. How is the HBase community right now in terms of actual committers? How's the size? Is it a still a small kernel and it's growing pretty rapidly, but it's, you, know, you have your big whales out there, yeah. Facebook and StumbleUpon and Riot Games and, uh, and, and whatnot, but you know, they're doing a lot of some good work there. So yeah, right now we have uh, the community, the core community is 18 committers and PMC members. So that basically means that this group of 18 people essentially um, are the folks that are controlling the direction, the releases, and uh, where HBase is going. Um, I think uh, two are at StumbleUpon, three are at Cloudera, and one of them is myself. Um, there's five or six at Facebook, uh, one at Twitter, one at Trend, Micro, um, one at eBay. So uh, basically a lot of the companies I'm mentioning are obviously like major users of the system. Um, or providing support for the system. If I want to, as, I, um, as we're obviously for our SiliconANGLE project, we're investing in uh, uh, HBase and, and, and a variety of other projects, we're totally into it, and, and Hadoop, thanks to you guys, uh, and, I, and Mike, and Amr, and the whole team over there. Uh, it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing it, but uh, we're going to start hiring engineers now, so this is kind of a use case that that's just not my uh, challenge, it's others, yeah. people want to contribute, so I want to hire guys that can be con contributing to the open source, and really, in an authentic way and really get behind it. What's the process for that? So, I mean, I mean, legitimate, not a throwaway, not a token, you know, uh, gesture. If you're a big company, we've seen that, uh, that and with other failed attempts. Legitimate startup and or mid-sized company or maybe even a large company. How do they ingratiate into the community? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the the easiest and most obvious way is sign up for the mailing list and start helping other people um, and kind of use the experience that you've gained from using the system um, and you know ask questions, answer questions, um, and you know, we've definitely given people a uh, commit bit uh, who are just helpful in the community um, and, and, and try to you know, answer difficult questions based on their experience, right? The next level is to get involved with development. Like, you know, it might be that you know, if we gave a better, like just as an example, if we gave a better error message, you, know, you can write a patch that will fix that error message so it'll tell me something actionable to fix whatever this symptom that I'm seeing. And you know, we've, we've seen a bunch of these kinds of things where like the symptom that we see doesn't really tell you what the root cause is. And like, you know, if you've dealt with this problem multiple times and you're just like, oh, I wish that error just message was better. Just write the patch. Just write, like, it's, it's going to be a relatively quick patch to say, you know, if we just had this little extra information, it would give us a better thread to pull on to find out what the heck yeah. was That's good citizenship cause. right there. That, that's absolutely good citizenship. It is a great way to figure out how to do uh, patches and how to. Um, so it's a typical earn your earn your way into it yeah, in a very I mean, collaborative way. We're we're a friendly bunch yeah. and like you know we'll help you through the process of um, getting a patch in and in all honesty like starting off with a um, you know technically trivial uh, patch is probably a really good way just to get started to understand you know there's all these tools you have to learn like um, you know Maven and the Java compiler and. Uh, Git and SVN. There's a whole bunch of tools that you know. That actually is probably the biggest hurdle to doing a contribution, generating a patch. Um, but once you have that process down, then like you know, you can uh, focus more on yeah, we're big, getting a better. We're, we use a lot of sports analogies here in the cube because we call it the ESPN of tech. But yeah, so uh, this is kind of the hazing. You know. <laughs> well, well, no, it's more a combine workout too. Like, yeah. little, well, hazing is once you get into the club, I guess, or the fraternity. <laughs> but really, it's more of show your skills and be a professional and. 
you know, just be honorable and show your, show your muscle, right? I mean, l demonstrate. Yeah. <laughs> what better way than just write code, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you, you know, and like, and uh, not be a jerk. Right? Yeah. I mean, there, there's it, it's pretty much any time like uh, the people we look for in committers are uh, making good technical contributions, are helping uh, people in the community, and they're also um, you know agreeable people and people that we can trust. You know, and when I say trust, it's like you know I have the commit bit and I actually have the right to modify anything in there. But like I'm only gonna modify and and commit code changes to areas that I understand well. Or unless I get like a second opinion from the person that I know knows that section well, like, um, and you know that that's kind of like there's these guardrails, and yeah. you know what your limitations are, and maybe you'll grow into some of these other areas over time. But yeah. you know, three uh, strikes you're out philosophy almost. Yeah, right? I don't no. know about that. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, some of us have learned Just, the hard way. Some of us yeah, like yeah. kind of see this, and uh, you know, I mean, it's it's overall healthy, right? Because I think as long as the Net effect is a positive. Okay, being impact having, on the having a commit bit and being on the one of eighteen, the power eighteen, um, the Karitsu there. Um, what's going on in terms of timetable? What's the what's the mindset of the group? Obviously, be cautious, do the right thing, but also there's some there's some pressure to you know ramp up and get this thing going. The demand is obviously high here at the HBase Con. It's sold yeah. out and there's demand. I mean. I mean, you know, everybody who comes to the table, everybody who's contributing code to the project, um, they have things that they care about. You could say it's their own agenda. Um, you know, from my point of view, um, I'm at Cladera. I support a wide variety of customers and many customers. So from my point of view, I'm going to spend my time um, focused on correctness and focused on making it so that it's easier to uh, make it easier to support and operate. Uh, because that is what uh, relieves stress from my shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, different folks like uh, maybe the Facebook guys, they'll just avoid certain features altogether and focus on performance of one particular part because that's what makes their application hum. You know, and other people like the Salesforce guys, they really care about their disaster recovery story, so they're going to invest there. Um, and overall, like you know, everybody in the community can provide feedback. Well, that's and there's going to be some general this like specialism based on their interest, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, their yeah. Their agenda. I mean, I mean they got to pay the bills. There's basically the, this HBase project is, uh, you know, the system is giving you these capabilities that you, you couldn't have before. And, um, you what know. What have you learned over the past uh, two years in particular with the HBase evolution? Because, you know, projects can get traction and become a, a lightning strike and grow uh, in a mega way like this one is. Um, what have you learned personally and also within the group? Um, yeah, so I mean, I've been involved in other projects in the past, and like, I, I think I, I like the way the community in the HBase pro, um, project acts. You know, I mean, uh, in general, we're pretty good at getting getting to a consensus. Um, we are we, we we like each other as people for the most part. <laughs> Um, and most uh, of the days, right? I'm most of the day. No, no, no. I, 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 I don't mean that in any bad way. Like, yeah, I know. You what know, you mean. like I'll go have a beer with half, like most of the guys who are in San Francisco. I was just being um, facetious. No problem. <laughs> I was just joking. But like, I mean, we all kind of know that, like, uh, you know, everybody has their particular use cases that they're trying to get out, and like, um, and and sometimes they overlap, and sometimes they don't, and like, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes we have these existential questions. What is the goal of HBase? What is the HBase going to be in a year? What's it going to be in two years? Um, and what are kind of certain priorities? And like, you know, Cloudera is going to push on certain things. Facebook is going to push on certain things. Stumble is going to push on other things. At the end of the day, it's, and it's an open source project. It's in the open. It's, it's out in the open and like, you know, I think um, it, at the end of the day, the things that Stumble and Facebook and Salesforce and eBay are trying to solve with it, are the things that like Cloudera has to care about because some of these folks are our customers, and all these folks are in the community with us. So like, uh, you know, if there's certain things that uh, they're less interested in pushing on, that's important to us. We'll push on them. Um, like an example, one thing that's going to come out in the 96 version of HBase, which is probably six months from now, I'm guessing. Whatever. It's uh, it, like you know we've done a big push on uh, wire compatibility, so we can get the upgrade story better. And if you went to some of the earlier talks today, this is a, a pain point that Facebook has mentioned. This is a pain point that uh, you know we care about because of a lot of our customers are concerned about it. It's a pain point that everybody has. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not, you know, um, it, it's a, it's a lot of work to get this done. And you know, one of our guys, uh, Jimmy Xiang, has kind of taken the lead and kind of pushed that and helped coordinate a lot of the other guys who are interested in, in working with. It. And you know, it's great because we're working with the Stumble guys. We're working with. Uh, the Hortonworks guys even. We're working with all kinds of folks to get this, um, you know, 
set of functionality pushed through so that you know next year when we start upgrading from HBase, it becomes a much easier uh, path without having to deal with downtime. Well, congratulations on all your success. It's great to know you, and I wish I uh, could stay in your office now that you have more space. Uh, <laughs> and I have an office space now, so uh, it's a great year and a half to get to know you on a personal level and watch you guys grow um, as a company and individuals. It's been fantastic. Cloudera is a, a rocket ship, and you guys are doing some great work. And I think you guys have managed the balance of the integrity of the business and also the performance of pushing the, the code out in a, in a good way. So congratulations. Um, high availability tools, making HBase recover faster. Uh, it's great stuff. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again soon. So we'll be right back with our next guest uh, right after this short break. <laughs>